During the ice ages of the Pleistocene epoch, sea levels periodically dropped as cold temperatures bound up huge amounts of ice in the polar regions. Glaciers crept over northern North America, Europe, and Asia, locking up even more water and helping to lower sea levels around the world. Land in the Bering Strait that had been underwater now emerged, creating a bridge between Siberia and Alaska. Large mammals that had not previously been on our continent entered North America by crossing the land bridge. Humans from Siberia also first entered the continent in large numbers around 13,000 years ago by the same route. Their descendants were the Maya, the Aztec, the Inca, and all the present-day Indian tribes of North and South America. Mastodons and mammoths ambled south into Florida in search of food and warmth. So did big camels and horses. Giant ground sloths 13 feet tall and giant armadillos up to 10 feet long were already here, having invaded Florida from South America. In the late Pleistocene, the Florida landscape must have resembled Africa, with large exotic mammals roaming over it. Predators like the saber-toothed cat and the speckled bear were here too. It was a fantastic time. Undoubtedly, the Clovis people that migrated in from Siberia hunted the oversized mammals for food. They left behind arrowheads and spear points, which we are finding today. The skull of a giant bison from the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville has a broken Clovis point embedded in it. Maybe it was dinner for a tribe. We don't know if humans overhunted the megafauna or if rapid climate changes took their toll on the big mammals. Most likely both factors played a part. We do know that by 10,000 years ago, they had disappeared everywhere. It was one of the greatest extinctions in all of geologic history. The smaller mammals that are still with us today survived the extinction somehow. This mineralized tooth from an extinct horse was found in the St. Mark's River near Tallahassee. For thousands of years after the extinction, there were no horses on the continent. But then the Spanish conquistadors reintroduced them in the 1500s. This mastodon tooth from the St. Mark's River shows uneven wear, as if the elephant had an irregular bite. The rivers and springs of Florida, more than any other state, became the final resting places for the skeletons and teeth of many of the Pleistocene mammals. A mastodon vertebra is pulled from the Oscilla River near Tallahassee. A tip from the mastodon's tusk recovered from the same site and a piece of its jaw are in excellent shape. With the rounded cusps of its molars, we know the mastodon was a browser that ate leaves and twigs. Just imagine swimming into a spring and finding a mastodon leg bone on the bottom. Was the animal killed by humans when it came to the spring to drink? We're not sure. Giant bones have even been found far back in the underwater caves of Florida Springs. Well, there's a, a bone room about 230 feet uh, in water depth, about 1,100 feet back inside the cave, and it's got artifacts and bones both. Some people think that maybe fairly recently the stuff slid back in there, and some people think, well, water tables were lower, and animals may have approached that cave-like entrance, and that's how they got in there. It may have been a time when the water tables were quite a bit lower. This mastodon skeleton on display at the Museum of Florida History in Tallahassee was found in Wakulla Springs in 1930. Divers have raised other bones deep in the cavern by inflating bags with air. Giant ground sloths were some of the most impressive mammals of the Pleistocene. There were many species of them. The Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona Beach has an excellent skeleton it was found in a borrow pit not far from the museum in Volusia County, Florida. This magnificent skeleton behind me is called the giant ground sloth. 
It's the best preserved skeleton of this species of giant ground sloth in the world. We can imagine the shaggy, four-ton creature pulling down vegetation with its curved claws in much the same way that a much smaller tree sloth does today. Like the mammoths and mastodons, the ground sloths were big vegetarians that required a lot of food, and maybe that was part of their undoing. People often ask, do we have dinosaur bones in Florida? The answer is that the surface formations in Florida are much too recent for dinosaurs. Dinosaurs lived in the Mesozoic era, about 65 to 250 million years ago. Here in Florida, we would have to drill thousands of feet down to find Mesozoic rock. The closest outcropping of rock old enough to have dinosaur bones would be somewhere near Selma, Alabama. 